Alright lads, in this video we're going to be talking a bit about endgame. The things we're going to be talking about are as follows. Best endgame griefing strategies, best ways to tunnel, when to tunnel, what layer to be on, all this good stuff is what's coming up in this video. First things first though, this is part 5 of my arena series, which is a playlist on the channel. Yesterday we talked about mid game, and the day before that we talked about early game. I will link mid game at the end and for those who want to watch early game I'm going to put a playlist up top right now which has all my season 6 arena strategies and guides especially to do with rotations and drop spots stuff like that that's what's in it right now obviously it's going to get more and more as time goes on so it might be worth hitting that sub button if you're interested in seeing all the best content regarding strategies metas and um, how to improve we have that all right here this is going to be the hub for fortnite competitive so moving on with the video now that my intro is out of the way the best end game griefing strategies so obviously this is i guess a double-edged sword me teaching them allows you to i guess be aware of them so you can use them when you see an opportunity to use them but it also comes with the i guess benefit of being prepared for when other people are going to do this on you because obviously all of these that i'm going to talk about these griefing strategies have been around for a while but most of the ones i was able to come up with are pretty new so two or three of them is to do with the bow. Basically, if you're able to get a bow and craft it into like the explosive bow, um, I don't know how to get the explosive bow, but there is a um flame bow. Sorry, I don't. Why am I saying explosive bow? I don't even think there is an explosive bow. I'm tripping. The flame bow, when you make that and craft it, um, obviously I'm not going in depth on how to craft specific bows right now, but for the flame bow, when you do craft it, imagine that as a, a trio. Imagine one player. Man, imagine three people on a trio having that thing. Not even one. Imagine three people having a bow on your trio with a flame. And they just flame. Like, imagine how many builds you can grief and height you can pull down. Imagine when height goes to wood, how easy it is to pull them down. And that's 93 arrows in total you have with fire. That's overpowered, man. Same goes if you use the stink. The stinker one is more, even more overpowered. Imagine everyone on your team running that. Just... 93 sting arrows ready to go and if you can save them till end game that's so overpowered man like just imagine that what 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 is the rest of the lobby meant to do like i don't understand that imagine you have multiple teams doing that in your lobby i don't see why nobody's talking about this how overpowered and broken that is um obviously i'm gonna have someone on my tree or running a running a bow, bow with the flames on it as well that would probably be me imagine doing a bit of a versatile i guess attack on it so one of them has a like your fragger would have a um, stink and me being an IGL would have a flame. Like that's a bit overpowered because you can come at them from two different angles there. You can pull them down while griefing them when they're boxed up. Um, very overpowered all around man. Um, versatile, different ways to use it. We're going to talk about the chicken man. The chicken <laughs> The chicken's been a, a bit of a meme for the last few days but it actually is a pretty overpowered item. Every time I've seen them I've actually just murked them and just taken them off the map. Just killed them just so other people can't use them but as well just to get that bit of chicken meat and a bit of the bones you know sorry for all the vegetarians out there but yeah and that, that does be my main goal when i see a little chicken you can fly with them obviously which is i've seen a lot of people like booger i think it was on his twitter or instagram where he got his teammates in his trio to absolutely rally him with the lamborghini and he went flying in the sky the way you do and he pulled out the chicken and used it as a parachute and came straight down on his opponent man it was overpowered but imagine pulling that off at like high ground, you know, having one like one of your players, I guess, having a chicken. He can just get down off height. He can float on height for a bit. Very overpowered all around, man, if you need to just get down. Obviously, I don't know where you're going to get a chicken in any game. But look, it's Fortnite, you know. People do be running around with chickens. Like you can have one guy on your teammate, on your team running around with a chicken all game. Throw the chicken in a box when you don't need him. Where is he going to go, you know? People people are smart, man. They'll, they'll think of something. But moving on. They're just grief and strategies I was thinking of. Obviously, you can still like dr trio with the drum shotgun or the primal shotgun. Imagine three of your teammates having that waltzing up to the same wall. What is it? What, what are you meant to do? It's just one of those seasons. I enjoy the season. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's one of the funnest seasons I've ever played. But when you're thinking competitively, and I'm sure all the pros are pissed about this, it's a lot less skill involved. Um, in certain aspects, it's a lot less skill. But in the likes of AOR and long range... It's a bit, bit luck based man with the bloom and stuff. It's kind of just sad and annoying. But again, there are just some griefing strategies. We're moving on to the best ways to tunnel right now. Uh, the best ways to tunnel and the strategies to tunnel in is basically very simple. If you know how to tunnel, I'm pretty sure everyone does. I don't need to go over that. And um, there's two or three different types of tunnels. You got your ramp tunnel, 
you've got your full box tunnel and then you've got your tarps for when you're on high ground and if you get good enough with them you can just do left wall tunnels left wall roof tunnels uh, right wall tunnels and then right wall roof tunnels so it's kind of just like almost like a c and then a backwards c so you just leave one side exposed which can save materials which obviously is going to help you guys out and obviously you can just do um, floor roof floor roof if you're directly above the last guy it's a great way to save materials but um, as far as when to tunnel uh, there's three main tips i can give you well two i'm not sure about the third one yet but the two main tips i can give you is start tunneling early and um, especially in duos and trios i'm not sure about solos about tunneling early it's probably better to hang back a bit so when everyone starts tunneling you start tunneling but in in, in duos and trios make sure you tunnel ahead get ahead of people especially so you can do a 180 look up and grief height as much as you can and constantly stay ahead of moving zones that's very important and um, to stay ahead of moving zones because once you get held back there that's where i guess all of the dead beats and the, i guess slops of the lobby are everyone's griefed and um, once you're at the back so don't get caught at the back tunnel ahead and shoot up best strategy it's been as the it's been the strategy for a minute if you're on low ground it's the best way to do it my, my um i'm going to talk about layers in a minute but if i'm talking about why is the tunnel another tip that i was going to give is just when you hear people shooting that means it's time to tunnel the reason why you want to do that is because if people are shooting at each other it means their attention is occupied so it's kind of like they're all distracted people are getting shot at and people are doing the shooting if you have a trio and they're shooting that means there's six people involved in that fight to a minimum and um, it means there's three people shooting and there's three people getting shot at and if you hear a shit ton of shots especially in trios and duos it usually means there's a lot of people fighting it's pretty common sense so you should use that time to rotate very big iq play but not a lot of people think about it it's very simple but it's very smart at the same time it's one of those simplistic complexities is what it's called something so simple that a lot of, a lot of people just avoid and forget about so you obviously have that strategy when you hear shooting time to rotate people are occupied you can apply that in any zone if you're getting spammed um in like half and half you're getting beamed again you can apply that strategy and just when you stop getting beamed and you hear them getting beamed just rotate get out of that position obviously it's a lot um harder to do than i say but you know yourself practice makes perfect and um, perfect practice makes even more perfect i guess i don't really know how that saying goes but it's kind of a shit one to be honest and um, what layer to be on the best layers to be on in my opinion for solos is mid mid layers if you can get height it's free take it obviously because you have to spend less mats then but if you can't get high ground i would say mid 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 layers are the best because they give the best of both worlds they give you the ability to look up and they give you the ability to look down and um, obviously that has that comes with a big downfall you can get a lot of information and you have more benefits to get kills that way you can look up and grief height you can look down and grief low ground because what i've noticed sorry about that but high ground tends not to um notice mid layers too much unless they're very good players and they see them as a potential player to take height they won't really grief you that much they're all about looking for free kills on low ground and unfortunately they get tunnel vision on low ground and that's how they end up losing high ground to somebody who is on a mid layer so that's why i prefer playing mid than having height from the get-go because obviously it costs mats to have high height a longer time so if you have height since half and half and you can keep tunneling especially in solos you can run out of materials real quickly so it's better to just play the mid game obviously that does cost more materials but there's a bigger chance of you getting a pick that you can actually get to and take the materials off if you're on high ground you're probably just beaming someone on low ground and you're going to kill them and the mats are going to stay down there the loot the ammo whatever it is it's all going to stay down there and you can't reach it unless you have a grapple a grapple a harpoon unless you have a, gra a harpoon nothing can happen for you so um high ground is pretty useless in that way that in solos you run out of materials too quickly so you can't get a refresh up there unless you get contested and win it and um, but most of the time it's not worth even winning it because you're not going to get mat materials back that quick it's better to just drop kill someone on low ground and then just stay low ground and work your way back up to a uh, mid layer so th that's my opinion on solos as far as i'm concerned is just to stay stay consistently in the mid layers same goes for duos to be honest but duos is much more easy to hold height it's probably the easiest mode to hold height in the whole of fortnite to be honest solos is easy ish but it's just not worth it and um, duos is pretty easy and it's worth it because you have instead of 1500 match you've 3000 materials so you can stay up there for longer
So it makes it easier to stay up there from half and half without getting a pick that you can get the mats off. You can get loads of picks, but you can't get the refresh, so to speak. So it's better to maintain high ground in duos. That's probably the best position to be. If not, again, consistent mid layers. You don't really get grief too much. Obviously, there's that terrible lobby that you could get where low ground decides to beam you and high ground decides to beam you and you're getting kind of pinched from below and above instead of from your left and your right like a normal fight would be because of just the circumstances you're in being late game. So that's unfortunate. But again, would you rather be having the chance of getting that? That kind of lobby where you get beamed from above and below or just guaranteed on the bottom you're going to get griefed and you're going to get pummeled on if you're on ultimate low running on the muck and um, again on high ground as well you're going to get focused guaranteed it's just a matter of time on when you're going to get focused but being in that mid layer you're kind of tucked away from everybody low ground is going to grief height height is going to grief low ground and you just cruise by especially if you can get it so you're on somebody like directly on somebody else's layer they're going to build a floor for you so you just place a cone so they can't edit up and same goes if there's people above you, you just build a floor or a cone so they can't add it down. And you do save a lot of materials that way. So there's different ways to look at it, man. And if it's a very narrow zone, you might not even have to build walls to your left or right. Or you might only have to build them to your left or your right. So it works out just a bit more expensive than actually being on height. And you don't have all the pressure of people beaming you. Because they say height is easier to, you know, avoid getting beamed and stuff like that. But or avoid getting beamed, like avoid wasting loads of materials, but you don't see the fact that height gets beamed for like five to six minutes straight sometimes, and a lot of the materials get burnt out that way, and especially with this season, with the SMGs there are, and I guess just everything, SMGs are real accurate this season, that's what I'm finding, let me know down below if you find that as well, it's a bit weird man, but that's all I have to say, trios, again the same strategy, height is the most overpowered, but again if you can get a mid layer, it's better than being on the bottom, so I would say don't be second height, whatever you do. Don't be second height in trios because trios tend to be a lot smarter because I guess there's three brains on the team rather than two and then obviously rather than one as well. One brain can't think of many players but when you've got three brains on high ground they will notice that A, this could be a potential guy to take height. Let's not let him get height. So it's better to just stay hidden and away. If you can get height, take it and hold it, man. Hold it as long as you can. You'll save materials that way. And you'll probably pick up a lot more picks. So that, that's all I have to say in this video, man. Uh, I'm going to link this video right now at the end in the outro. Talking about mid games. And obviously the playlist is going to be linked right now. And it was linked earlier. So you can go and watch them if you want. Thank you very much. And I am out of here. Make sure you hit that sub button though, man. Be a legend.